So this is a uh, continuity. So for the function to be continuous at a point at x equals c, that means there's no holes, no gaps, or no jumps at x equals c. So basically, if you're graphing it, you have to be able to cross c without lifting your pen or pencil. And that's what it means to be continuous at a point. So let's talk about discontinuities. So at this point, you can see there's a hole. Um, but just to make out, make some points here, the limit does exist. It exists. And we can also see that the left limit does equal to the right limit. But we also see that f of c, when you plug in, there's no value, is undefined. It's not defined. So here we have f of c is defined, but the limit is a DNE. And, and it's a DNE because the left limit does not equal to the right limit. So therefore, it's not continuous at c. So we can see here, again, f of c is defined. And we can see here the limit exists at c. Again, the left limit does equal to the right limit, so that limit exists. But the problem here is that the limit does not equal to f of c, the define. So it's a jump. So therefore, OK, so here's actually the definition for continuity at a point. So the first one, it does need to be defined, but that's not enough. The limit exists, which means the right limit equals the left limit. So it, that does exist. But that, still, that's not enough. And lastly, these two have to be equal. So basically, 1 is equal to 2. The left limit equals the right limit which is the limit, which is equal to where it's defined. So they all three have to be lined up to be continuous at a point at x equals c. OK, just a couple points here. If any of these conditions fail, then f is discontinuous at the point c. If f is continuous at every single point in the interval, then f is considered continuous on the interval, a, b. If f is continuous everywhere from minus infinity to infinity, then f is continuous everywhere. For example, polynomials. So since this is a piecewise function, we want to ask the question, is the function continuous at 2 where it's split up? So we're going to use this three-step process that we just showed above there. So the first step is f of 2 defined. And it certainly is. It says right here, if x equals 2, it's 6. So we write f of 2 is equal to 6. So now we want to find the limit as x approaches 2. So when we look up here, you know, it, usually with the piecewise, we want to make sure we find the left limit and the right limit. But when we have a not equal, that means this is the function that it's defined to the right of 2 and to the left of 2. This is the left and right limit at x equals 2, So which is just plain old x approaches 2. 
So it's the function x squared plus 1, and since that's a polynomial, we could just plug it in. So it's defined at 2. The limit exists at 2. Well, we have on the left side 5, and on the right side 6, and that is not equal to each other. So therefore, is not continuous at 2. Now just a note, it is enough to just say it's continuous at C if this equation holds true, because it does have all the parts to it. We have the definition, it's defined at f of C, on the left is the limit, and so this is basically the third step in a, what I call our third three-step process. But I actually do think it's good to use the three steps because it keeps you organized. Again, this would be our first step, this would be our second step, and then showing that they're equal to would be our third step. So here's a question. Is this function f of x equals x minus 3 to the 20th continuous everywhere? Well, the answer is yes, because that is a polynomial. When you multiply that out, that's a 20th degree polynomial. And we know for every limit we take that it's defined to be, you just plug in that limit. So th here's a theorem. A rational function is continuous everywhere in the domain. It's discontinuous where the denominator is zero. So hopefully this makes sense because the domain is just everywhere where the denominator is not zero. <laughs> so it's actually, that's actually what we're looking for, is we're looking for the domain, which is where our function is continuous. So we want to find the discontinuities of this function. So what we'll do is we'll factor it. You could factor the top, but it's not really necessary. But I'll go ahead and do it. And don't be fooled. Just because that x minus 2 cancels doesn't mean it's going to be deleted. It can simplify, but you'd be missing out a discontinuity if you canceled it. So as I mentioned, everywhere that the denominator is 0 is a discontinuity. So we just write that. So at x equals 0 and 2, which is where the denominator is 0 only. So this is an easy enough theorem. So if we have two functions that are continuous, given that they're both continuous, then the sum is continuous, the difference is continuous, the product is continuous, and the quotient is continuous, provided the denominator at that point is not zero. I'm going to show the proof of number three, and you can prove the other three as an exercise. They're short, little, easy proofs. So to prove three, our goal, since we're proving the product is continuous at C, our goal is to prove that the limit of f times g, f of x times g of x, as x approaches c, is equal to f of c times g of c. So if we want to prove this, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the left-hand side and have it transform to the right-hand side. So we copy the left side. And here, since f and g are both continuous at c, then the limit exists at both of them. Since both of the limits exist, we can take the limit of the product as the product of the limit. Well, now, since they are both, it's given that they are both continuous, well, then this is equal to f of c by definition of continuity, and this is equal to g of c by definition of continuity. And we've transformed it to the right. Again, both of those reasons are since f and g are continuous. And that's the end of the proof. Told you it was short.
Okay, so we want to actually find C so that it is continuous at 1. That's where this graph is broken up at. So let's just look at this. Since we have the equal here, this is less than or equal to, this is where it's defined at this function. And this is also the left limit. And it's the left limit because its x is less than 1. It's to the left of 1, so it's the left limit. Oops. This is supposed to be greater than. And since this is defined to be greater than 1, that is the right limit. So let's go through our three steps. Our first one is f of 1 is defined. And we can see it is defined here at cx squared. So we plug in 1 into that polynomial, which is c minus 3. So it is defined. We just got to find c so that it's continuous. And so now our limit, but remember, we have the left limit is defined to be differently than the right limit because x is less than 1 is the first function, and x is greater than 1 is the second section function. So we write it out separately. 1 to the left of f of x is the limit as x approaches 1 to the left of cx squared minus 3, which I, now I could plug in 1, which is c minus 3. The same as, it's the same function as it was defined. But now we have to write out 1 to the right. And that's the other function. It's defined here. Greater than 1 is to the right. So that's the right limit. 2cx plus 4. And to evaluate that limit since the polynomial, we just plug it in. Which is, that's just times 1. So it's 2c plus 4. So in order for this limit to exist and to be continuous, we have to set these equal to each other. c minus 3 is equal to 2c plus 4. Solve for c. So there we have it. c equals minus 7 to be continuous. So I do recommend that we check it, just in case you made any mistakes. So we're going to plug c in to that function and use the three-step process to check. So it's cx squared, so it's minus 7x squared minus 3. And that's if x is less than or equal to 1. And that's 2 times minus 7. So we're going to use the three-step process. f of c, not f of c, we want to find f of 1. So it, at x equals 1 is what we're checking. c is equal to 1. Let's say it's equal to 1. So f of 1 is minus 10. So the left limit is this function. We plug in 1. And the right limit is greater than 1, is that function. And they are equal. So the limit as x approaches 1 is minus 10. And 1 is equal to 2 since minus 10 equals minus 10. If you want to write it out, we have the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is equal to f of 1. So therefore, continuous at 1. That's it for today.